So it's about five o'clock in the morning and it's raining outside. So I thought I'd do this presentation in my Chinese room that you see behind me. The question for today is, what is the meaning of Kung Fu? Most people would probably answer that it's traditional Chinese martial arts. And if that's what you think, you wouldn't be that far off. But today we're going to look deeper beyond that. Some of the first immigrants that came to the U.S., um, most of them came from Guangdong province, southern China. And um, some of them probably included some Kung Fu masters, Tai Chi, Shaolin, Qing Yi, Ba Gua, Wing Chun, Choi Li Fet. Um, and so probably America's first acquaintance with uh, Kung Fu was seeing some of these masters and that's how uh, the term Kung Fu became related to Chinese martial arts. As well, around 1972, the series Kung Fu uh, came out with David Carradine. And so people became, became acquainted with Kung Fu, Kung Fu in Cantonese as uh, related to martial arts. The um, name Kung Fu comes from uh, Cantonese uh, meaning of work, like Zhou Gong means to do work. And the second part, Fu, is uh, time dedicated. So in reality, the whole, uh, what Kung Fu literally means is the time spent in perfecting the skill. And um, what's interesting is it's not really um, talking about martial arts, but Kung Fu as uh, a practice. Uh, these days we're familiar with uh, Zen, Zen Buddhism, and people think that, again, similarly, people think of Zen as a religion. But Zen is a practice, and Zen Buddhism, Buddhism is a practice. So, you know, we're acquainted with the Zen in the Art of Archery, and then that book came out, Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And so we understand that Zen, the practice of Zen, the kind of like the attitude of uh, non-ego full mindfulness, then can be incorporated to basically any practice, uh, the art of tea. And so likewise in Kung Fu, um, since we go back to the idea that Kung Fu means time dedicated to perfecting the skill, can also be applied to basically any practice. You can have Kung Fu of uh, um, painting, you can Kung Fu of music, or um, even though most people think it was just martial arts. And we when we understand that, um, we can kind of look at this a little deeper in that in the Kung Fu discipline, there's um, what you practice, which we will call the subject, and then the methodology or the discipline of how you're practicing it. And when you separate those two things and understand that Kung Fu is actually the discipline and the methodology rather than what you're practicing, that can be a very transforming experience. Um, because if you think of it as only the subject that you're practicing, for example, if you're doing Tai Chi, and that is your Kung Fu. And uh, Kung Fu is only when you're practicing your Tai Chi, then that's you're limiting it because that's only the time that you're experiencing your Kung Fu. But if you look deeper at that and uh, think of Kung Fu as the time that you dedicated, the methodology, then you can actually start to live your Kung Fu. So, um, in the methodology is just as important and, and the reason why is you can take that kung fu that you understand as methodology and expand it to almost anything that you do and in some of the video presentations where i'm showing kung fu in daily life um that's exactly what i'm talking about
I'll go more into methodology in future videos, but uh, basically this concept of Kung Fu as a practice, what does that include? Well, it includes your attitude, it includes your discipline, and it includes the methodology, as I said, the different ways that you train. For example, in the Saber and the Staff videos that break it up into sections so that you can practice not the entire Dalu as rope, but so that you can um, break it down. In the Tai Chi videos, I tell you how to practice one move at a time so you can experience that the universe of that one move. These are some of the examples of considering your Gong Fu as that other part of the practice rather than the subject. Those, those types of methodology. Is this your training? Are you doing rote? I mean, uh, rote training is great when you're trying to key in particular pattern. Um, the conceptual training, like when I, in a video where I talked about the principles of Kung Fu applied to the form, and I, I went through the, some of the Tai Chi form and showed how basic Kung Fu principles were applied to each of the moves. That's more conceptual training. And so these are the things you need to think about when you think about the other side of your Kung Fu discipline other than the subject. I hope that makes some sense to you. We'll uh, cover more of that in the future. As well, some of my latest Kung Fu actually has been um, maintaining this uh, YouTube channel about uh, the legacy of uh, Master Golden Ying and teaching some of his forms. Um, even though I studied filmmaking in art school, um, I'm having to relearn how to transform that knowledge into uh, doing these YouTube videos. And it's taken a lot of time and effort to really get it to a point of where I could use it as a teaching tool. And so this has become my latest Kung Fu. And there it will be mistakes along the way, I understand that. And so hopefully um, it'll get a little better as we go along. I think that when people think of Kung Fu as a subject that they're practicing, whether it's like Tai Chi, Shaolin, Xing Yi, blah, blah, um, it becomes so limiting because um, you're actually looking at the subject, uh, it's kind of like that phrase, you can't see the forest for the trees. You're concentrating on one thing so much that you forget that there's this whole other side to Kung Fu discipline. Um, in many of my um, teaching videos, I always give lots of methodology um, tips for ways to do the practice. And I think that a lot of it gets lost because um, YouTube um, followers will see that I'm teaching sword and they're not interested in sword or they don't do the saber. And so they um, don't watch that video, but they're losing in all the methodology that I'm teaching in many of my lessons. Because when I'm teaching, I use uh, teach the methodology because I feel like that is a tool that you can carry on to uh, learn many, many different things. Think of it as like a carpenter. He's making uh, some project, a table or a chair, a bench or something like that. That's the subject, the Kung Fu, uh, the Tai Chi, the Shaolin that you're associating as the actual woodcraft but the woodcraft itself is a multi-purpose discipline where you can make many different uh, objects. And so therefore, knowing how to use tools, which is like methodology and uh, practice, will enable you to really learn many more things than, you, than just your daily practice of Kung Fu. Uh, when you start to see this, then you can actually live your Kung Fu. And I think that's the basic difference. As well for myself, I use Kung Fu and methodology 
I don't like separate any of my practices. I have many other practices that I uh, practice. And um, if we only limit it to what we think of as traditional um, Chinese martial arts, and when we go out and we encounter something else that we do and we learn something from that, are we bringing that into our Kung Fu discipline as a tool? So for example, I have this uh, uncle, he's not really a um, blood uncle, he's a was a close friend of my father and he was a master gunsmith and Olympic shooter. And when I started uh, pistol shooting, competition pistol shooting, um, my father was actually a competition pistol shooter as well. Um, he gave me uh, some tips. And one of the tips he gave me was to um, make handling a firearm as normal as picking up keys. He said, you come in the house and you drop your keys off and you pick up your keys and there's nothing attached to it. It becomes so part of your norm that uh, it becomes part of you. And so I've always thought about that. And so taking that idea and incorporate it into my Kung Fu. Um, there was a time where I was uh, having a difficulty with the particular staff movement. And so I took that suggestion of my Uncle Bob and I would take the staff and put it out on the fence. And every time I walked by that staff, I would have to do that move. Just like it was a simple transition move that I was working on. And so that's an example of how I incorporated basically a tool from another discipline and incorporated it into my Gung Fu. Um, and so that really opens up the world for you because you know that phrase, give a man a fish and he lives one day, teach a man how to fish and he can live forever. And that's exactly what this is uh, like. Because if you have these tools, then you can use it to master just about anything. When I turned 70, uh, my family held a banquet for me and we invited uh, friends from all different parts of our life, old uh, art student friends, and we had Kung Fu friends, and we had people that we had met when we moved to Elk. And um, there was a big, big gathering to celebrate my turning 70. And at this uh, celebration, my son, gave a speech about me. Now my son had grown up with us, uh, my wife and I, teaching Kung Fu for all those years and going down to Sifu and all the train, Kung Fu training I had, but he really never had an interest in martial arts. And I accepted that. And I always wondered whether he understood what my practice was about. And so at this banquet, he stood up and gave a whole speech about my father has used his Kung Fu to learn just about everything he wanted to learn. And when I heard that, it just really warmed my heart so much because I finally understood that he really knew what my Kung Fu was about, that he understood that my Kung Fu training allowed me to self-teach. And he himself uh, actually used his own self-teaching to become IT um, tech. Um, he just didn't go to school to learn that. He just learned how to learn on his own. And I kind of attribute that to him picking up that idea that Kung Fu is whatever you do, and you can use that to learn many other things in life. And uh, beyond that, just a few days ago, he came up to visit. And before he came to visit, he sent me a link to a uh, teacher that teaches golf, my son love to play golf, I'm not into golf, but he understood that I would enjoy that teacher's um, teaching method on YouTube. And so we were able to uh, kind of discuss that together. So I'm telling you all this because it's kind of like a, a way of kind of making you, helping you understand that Kung Fu goes beyond the very thing that you're, you think is your subject, your Tai Chi, your Shaolin, whatever it is, your bakwa, 
is, is uh, really beyond that. And I want you to kind of think about that and kind of see if you could see your Kung Fu in a whole different light. And so um, that's the lesson for today. Thank you.